charge water if you want to sniff over here? No, no. this year is General Rodriguez, this is Brian Whitman at the Pentagon. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Brian? Welcome back to the uh, Pentagon Briefing Room. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon, this morning here. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Major General David Rodriguez, he is the commander of Combined Joint Task Force 82 in Afghanistan. Uh, he and his uh, troops are responsible for security and stability operation in NATO's Regional Command East. Uh, he is also the senior U.S. commander in country and is re responsible for the ongoing counterterrorism operations. Uh, he assumed uh, command in February of this year and uh, is quite familiar with this room and uh, with many of you uh, as his time on the Joint Staff, uh, as you'll recall. Uh, but it's his first opportunity as the uh, commander uh, to talk to you in this format, in this forum here, and we do appreciate you taking the time to do that. And uh, why don't I turn it over to you for a uh, kind of an update and operational overview, and then we'll get into a few questions. Okay, well, thank you, Brian. Well, good afternoon from Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Like you said, uh, Major General Dave Rodriguez, uh, the commander of Combined Joint Task Force uh, 82. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today about the situation in Afghanistan. The Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, the Afghan National Security Forces, uh, and the International Security Assistance Force, along with the uh, Combined Joint Task Force 82, have been collectively working together to bring stability and security to the people of Afghanistan. Uh, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, in partnership with over 37,000 uh, security and assistance force troops from uh, NATO and uh, 25 provincial reconstruction teams, uh, are helping the government of Afghanistan to extend its reach of, of, the, of the government to the people and developing a stable and secure environment for the country. While the government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, supported by the international community, is improving the infrastructure uh, development here as well as uh, the economy, they realize that development goes hand in hand with security. And the Afghan National Security Forces are continuing to build their capacity and increasingly taking the lead during planning and operations. The accomplishments in development and security have been possible because of the efforts of the leadership of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan as well as the provincial leadership and the Afghan National Security Forces. Uh, we're, here, we're proud to be assisting the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, the Afghan National Security Forces, and our international partners as we bring development, security, and stability to all the people of Afghanistan. And uh, I'd be happy to uh, answer any of your questions at this time. Thank you. Well, thank you, and we'll get started here. General, it's Al Pesson from Voice of America. Within the last few weeks, there's been a lot of controversy about civilian casualties as a result of U.S. and NATO airstrikes. 
Have you put any new procedures into place uh, in order to try to reduce the impact on civilians of some of your operations? Uh, we take the uh, civilian casualties seriously and uh, work very, very hard in every single situation to uh, ensure that uh, the actions we take are uh, required militarily to accomplish the mission and are proportional to the situation that we're involved in. Uh, and we review those uh, continually to ensure that we are uh, best protecting the people. We realize that uh, civilian casualties are a uh, severe impact on our ability to uh, influence uh, the uh, future of this country. They're so important in an insurgency. Uh, we work very, very hard with uh, uh, both uh, precision intelligence and information uh, to ensure that uh, we do not uh, put uh, civilians at risk. Uh, the other thing we also uh, work hard at uh, is uh, precision in reporting uh, those, uh, those casualties and uh, there's uh, not always the, the first or second thing you read is uh, the most accurate uh, situation. Thank you. Can, yeah, uh, can you give us some examples where you've gotten maybe some bad reporting, bad publicity that you didn't deserve? and? Also, I had asked if you put any new procedures into effect. It sounds like you haven't and you're satisfied with the procedures that you have. We're satisfied with the procedures and we always uh, uh, work to uh, do them with the most precision and the best that we possibly can. Uh, and uh, just as an uh, example, uh, uh, in uh, one of the incidents that uh, we um, we had uh, where there were significant uh, civilian casualties reported. There were uh, uh, about uh, eight uh, that we could confirm, and uh, the report was about uh, 50 was the uh, maximum number reported in the paper. So there's a significant challenge there because, of course, the, uh, the enemy does not wear uniforms. Uh, so, uh, so there's a, um, a significant potential for uh, a wide range of uh, reports in the uh, in the uh, newspapers are with the uh, insurgent uh, propaganda. Jim, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Jim Mannion from Agence France Press. I wonder if you could talk about the, uh, the role of Al-Qaeda, if any, in the fighting. And if, there, if you are seeing an Al-Qaeda presence, uh, could you uh, give us a sense of the numbers and, and, and what their role, role is. Uh, yes, there's a, uh, a presence of uh, Al-Qaeda in this insurgencies. There, of course, there are several insurgency groups uh, that we uh, are, uh, are struggling with here. One of the biggest one, of course, is Al -Talib uh, the Taliban. Uh, Al-Qaeda is, is, uh, is, has an effect in this uh, theater. Uh, we see it uh, several ways. Uh, the uh, Al-Qaeda uh, network is the one that brings most of the uh, uh, foreign fighters in. Uh, they uh, have been uh, a little bit of an increase over last year in uh, the numbers. Uh, in, uh, there's about uh, three areas where we have uh, uh, challenges with the foreign fighters, and uh, we continue to uh, uh, target them uh, as best we possibly can. Uh, Jeff? General, Jeff Shogel with Stars and Stripes. Can you talk about how, with all the resources available to the U.S. military, Osama bin Laden has been able to elude capture? Well, there's uh, rugged terrain in this part of the, uh, the world, and, uh, and uh, he, uh, he understands he's a, he's a real... Uh, effective at uh, hiding uh, in amongst population centers or in uh, isolated parts of uh, the, uh, the countries here. And uh, that's how he, he's been able to uh, elude us uh, finding him. Uh, John. <clears throat> uh, back to the question about Al-Qaeda, can you try to quantify for us uh, what, what, maybe what percentage of attacks you think are, uh, are coming from Al-Qaeda, from foreign fighters? And uh, secondly, can you tell us what you're seeing, what's the latest you're seeing in terms of Iranian activity uh, uh, in Afghanistan? Uh, 
as uh, as far as the uh, Al Qaeda activity, uh, it's a uh, it's a minority of the uh, the attacks here, um, and uh, they also uh, all help uh, facilitate and uh, move resources uh, to include money, and uh, they have uh, had several uh, uh, contacts where they've been. Um, uh, like a cadre type organization where they've uh, got some recruits and uh, brought them in where they have a, a couple foreign fighters that lead a, uh, a larger force with uh, uh, in a cadre type uh, operation. As far as uh, the Iranian uh, influence, uh, the uh, Iranian influence uh, in Afghanistan has mainly uh, been on the political front, which is a, uh, a um, situation that uh, both the uh, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the country of Iran uh, work out uh, according to uh, their desires as sovereign nations. And the, uh, there has been some uh, uh, military insignificant uh, uh, arms, ammunition, and uh, explosives that have uh, been moved through Iran, but there's no, uh, no specific um, tie to uh, the leadership of the country in, of Iran in that uh, movement of arms, ammunition, and equipment. A uh, couple of follow-ups, General. Uh, when you say Iran's involvement has been primarily political, what do you mean? Well, they've had uh, meetings between uh, the uh, some of the political leaders here. Uh, they've also uh, they uh, provide uh, some uh, uh, economic development uh, funds uh, to the uh, country of Iraq. Uh, they also provide uh, power uh, to them on their uh, as a uh, an economic uh, uh, type of influence. So uh, the the normal things that uh, partnering countries uh, uh, participate in. A positive of a positive nature. Uh, that's for the uh, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and Iran to, uh, uh, to determine, sir. Could you give us the latest on the border situation with Pakistan? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You were talking about the foreign fighters are primarily al-Qaeda. Are the borders with Pakistan as porous as they were before? Uh, and have there been any uh, recent cross-border uh, operations involving U.S. military in hot pursuit or otherwise? Uh, into Pakistan. The uh, the border situation uh, again right now. Uh, Pakistan is uh, executing a, a significant military operation over there along their uh, western border in the in the federally administrated tribal areas in the northwest uh, province territories, and uh, they've uh, they've continued to. Uh, uh, conduct operations to improve their security in that region and on the border. Uh, we do uh, significant coordination with the uh, Pakistan military at uh, multiple levels over here, uh, starting at the strategic level with the uh, International Security Assistance Force, the uh, Pakistani military as well as the uh, Afghan military. And uh, the uh, border region is, uh, is a significant challenge because of the ruggedness of the terrain and the distance. Uh, but uh, we uh, are working together to, uh, to reduce that uh, flow of uh, insurgents back and forth both ways across the border. Just one more follow-up. What is the current level of cross-border attacks from Pakistan into Afghanistan? Uh, last month, it was a, uh, about a double of what it was uh, a year ago, the same month, uh, the same time last year. Uh, this year, it's about the same, so it's uh, decreased uh, a little, uh, a little in the past month here, uh, mainly again because of the uh, uh, Pakistani military military operations being conducted uh, at, at the present time. Oh, go ahead, General Sal Pesson. Again, if I could follow up on that, are you doing anything new or increased? to help the Pakistanis on their side of the border? And have you worked on any plans with them to use U.S. forces on their side of the border, whether ground forces, air forces, uh, or, or fire, uh, in order to help them in what they're doing? Uh, 
uh, no, we've made uh, no plans to uh, use uh, any U.S. forces on uh, their their side of the border. They're a sovereign country, and uh, they're uh, they're uh, doing a uh, like I said a military operation now to to help uh, provide better secure there. Uh, as far as what we do on the border, like I said, we work at uh, coordination meetings at every level, uh, from the uh, tactical, operational, strategic level, and we have uh, established a uh, good. Um, medium for sharing intelligence, information, and uh, communication. And uh, the rest of uh, what, we're, what the United States is trying to do, of course, is uh, provide them a significant amount of assistance uh, as they ask for, as they try to uh, extend governance in there. And they've, of course, the U.S. has pledged uh, $750 million and some, uh, some airframes as well as some training to help uh, support that effort. But that's uh, done through uh, through the Pakistani government and uh, does not, uh, we only monitor that because of the coordination we do with them. We don't have any direct uh, impact on the, those plans. Yeah. Uh, John Carl, ABC News again. Can, can you just give us like a 30,000 foot view? How, how are things going? Uh, uh, security situation in Afghanistan, there's been some suggestion uh, by, by members of Congress that we should have uh, uh, more troops in Afghanistan. Do, do you think that, that that's the case, or do you think that uh, things are progressing in such a, a point that we uh, may be able to reduce uh, uh, U.S. troop levels in Afghanistan in the near future? What, what, what's your overall assessment? Uh, the, the security situation uh, here uh, uh, continues to improve uh, uh, over time as the uh, Afghan National Security Forces, which, uh, for example, in the Army, uh, we've got about uh, half of uh, trained and out equipped out in the field uh, uh, fighting. And um, uh, so as well as uh, the police, which uh, are a couple years behind the uh, development of the Afghan Army, uh, which we're working hard on now. And uh, as, the, as the chairman stated m many times, uh, what we're looking for here is uh, some more more trainers to uh, to help out with the police force. Now, we're without them, we're still doing training on the police. It just will help speed up that process if we got uh, got more trainers. Uh, the uh, again, the Afghan National Security Forces, specifically the Army, are doing very very well, and uh, are uh, are picking up uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, capabilities and effectiveness. And the uh, police, like I said, a little bit behind, but they're moving forward. And, and, and but the second part of that was, I mean, do, do, you, do you see a scenario in the near future where, where overall force levels could come down? I mean, when, when, when do you think that would happen? Well, I think the, uh, the building of the security forces are going to take another uh, uh, two to three years as they uh, continue to build their uh, capability. And, uh, and then again, uh, the po um, Reducing of forces is dependent on uh, many, many things. Of course, uh, the development of their capacity of governance, their development of their economy, and uh, their development of a, uh, a national security system that includes cooperative uh, efforts with uh, the uh, Pakistani military security forces. So uh, that's a hard question to say right now, but uh, I'll just tell you that the security, all those are moving in a, in a positive direction now, and uh, I think. Uh, Time will tell uh, when we can uh, begin uh, reducing forces. Barbara? Um, General Rodriguez, if I could just go back and follow up on several points. You said a while ago uh, the number of foreign fighters coming in had increased, uh, especially you had seen them in three areas. First, can you quantify the increase? Where are these people coming from? Are they Saudis mainly? Who are they? Uh, there, uh, when I, it, it's increased uh, probably uh, uh, 50 to 60 percent over it was, what it was last year, Barbara. And uh, they come from uh, multiple uh, areas in the in the Middle East. And uh, I think I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. Over. You just go over the. Are, you're saying, are you saying they're mainly coming across the border from Pakistan? Is that their point of entry? And where are they focusing their operations inside Afghanistan? Uh, yes, uh, most of them come uh, across uh, the border from uh, 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 through the uh, through Pakistan uh, and the border there, 
and uh, their focus and uh, their energies in, a, in about uh, three places, three areas were uh, up in uh, Regional Command East, and um, uh, that's what we're uh, focusing on. If I could just continue to follow up. You then said, and I lost you a little bit, that last month attacks had doubled from where they were a year ago. I take that to mean you're talking about June 07 versus June 06, but you've seen them decrease in July. Is this, uh, is this a correlation to the increase in foreign fighters in your area? Are, you, are those attacks by mainly foreign fighters? Again, I, uh, on the, uh, the attacks, that was in relationship to the border, okay? So they've, uh, last month, uh, they were double what they were this time last year. And uh, again, uh, this month, uh, they've been a little bit less. And uh, part of that, again, is because the uh, military operations that the uh, uh, Pakistani military is conducting right now, I think that's what uh, the effect of those have been on us. And uh, I think it's just a, uh, a result of uh, a couple of things. One is the uh, expanding uh, presence of uh, the Afghan National Security Forces throughout the depth and breadth of the regional command here, so that uh, that has uh, contributed to some of the increase in, in contacts, as well as uh, some expansion of the uh, governments, governance and Afghan National Security Forces up into the uh, upper northeastern regions in the Konar and Nuristan province, which we continue to uh, expand into uh, to extend the governance of uh, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan in conjunction with Afghan National Security Forces. Talk about the foreign fighters, a 50 to 60 percent increase. Uh, just can you put any kind of overall number on it? Is it 10 guys? Is it uh, 200 guys? And let me also to take the moment just to follow up. Uh, what is your latest, you were speaking about bin Laden in uh, quite the present tense. What is your latest information on his whereabouts, his health, and your analysis of why he is staying so much out of sight, but Ayman al Zawahi is, you know, making videotapes around the clock these days? I didn't get all that question, but I'll answer uh, the part that I did get, and then uh, you can uh, redirect, uh, Barbara. But uh, anyhow, uh, the, the numbers, I'm not going to give you specific numbers, but uh, it's, uh, it's somewhere between the two numbers that uh, you talked about there as far as the ones that uh, we've been able to, uh, to uh, understand uh, what's going on. Uh, um, and then the... Uh, like I said, the uh, the challenges on uh, on both sides of the border and uh, in uh, in Pakistan uh, have all uh, contributed to this, as well as uh, the porosity of the border. And uh, again, both uh, the Pakistan military, the uh, Afghan National Security Forces, as well as the uh, uh, International Security Assistance Forces, are continuing to uh, to improve the capacity of the uh, the uh, border police as well as the uh, command and control and communications that support the, uh, the ability to react to those uh, border incursions on uh, going both ways uh, in, the, uh, in some rugged terrain. My other question was, you spoke about bin Laden in uh, quite the present tense. What is your latest assessment on where, if you spoke about him in the present tense, your latest assessment on where he is, where Zawahiri is, and why bin Laden is staying so much out of sight when Ayman al Zawahi is uh, making videotapes uh, quite, quite often. Uh, I, I couldn't answer that question why uh, when, uh, you know, like I said we're, we're still assuming that uh, uh, he's, uh, he's still around and uh, at, uh, influencing the, uh, the uh, Al-Qaeda network, and we continue to uh, apply all the you know, national resources we have to try to, uh, to track him down over. Jim, go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry. General, Jim Manning from Agence France Press again. Uh, the foreign fighters who are coming into Afghanistan, are any of them coming 
Uh, are any of them uh, Iraqis or people who uh, have had experience fighting in Iraq? And also, uh, can you describe, uh, you know, the, the safe havens that Al-Qaeda has in, in Pakistan, how extensive they are? Uh, as far as uh, experience, uh, it's uh, uh, from uh, Iraq. We're not, uh, you know, we don't have any uh, exact uh, uh, intelligence that says that, but uh, you can obviously see some of the same type of uh, tactics and techniques and procedures that, uh, you know, are transferring between uh, Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. And then uh, I couldn't tell you about uh, the... Uh, development of the support bases in in Pakistan uh, with a lot of precision. I can just tell you uh, some of the effects that we're seeing uh, uh, over here in uh, Afghanistan. About the other uh, General, can you give us a status report on uh, the Taliban? Uh, uh, are they a bigger fighting force, smaller fighting force uh, than they were a year ago? Uh, uh, any, any word on their leadership? Uh, and or their tactics? Are they conducting uh, offensive military operations uh, or are they pretty much dug in and relying on uh, classic insurgencies, uh, IEDs, suicide bombers, that kind of thing? Uh, this, uh, you know, that's uh, changed over time uh, here. Uh, they've had uh, a, um, about uh, uh, 20 attacks over the last uh, six months here that have more than had more than 30 uh, people in them, which uh, we kind of separate from the uh, the hit and run type tactics uh, that uh, is a classic uh, uh, counterinsurgency model. Uh, they've had about uh, that many, but uh, we've had a significant. Uh, uh, the International Security Assistance Force have had a significant impact on their uh, their leadership that have disrupted their capability to. Uh, to conduct many of those large attacks, which are uh, decreasing from a, a high probably in uh, the May-June time frame. Uh, down in uh, Regional Command South, they've uh, had some uh, significant losses. Uh, they've had about uh, 20 uh, or so key leaders uh, that have been uh, either killed or captured, of course, uh, uh, led by uh, the uh, Medulla Dudul Lang uh, being uh, uh, killed. And they've also, uh, tw of those 29 of those were captured by uh, uh, Pakistan, in Pakistan, uh, another uh, uh, indication of uh, the contribution Pakistan makes in the uh, uh, global war on terror. Are, are, are they, uh, have they decreased in their operational ability, uh, their strength? Uh, are they getting stronger? Are they getting weaker? Do you think you're gaining on the Taliban? Uh, again, I think that uh, they've uh, continued to uh, uh, bring uh, as much as they could to the fight as they could. I think they've uh, been severely disrupted. Uh, so uh, right now it's, uh, it's probably uh, not much different between what they were in the past years. Uh, was, did they start out a little stronger this year than uh, last year? Uh, that's uh, I, I, They probably did, but uh, where they're at now is about the same level after uh, the significant disruption in leadership and uh, several uh, uh, good operations the uh, International Security Assistance Force have executed over the past uh, six months. Go ahead, Jeff. All right, General. Jeff with Stars and Stripes again. Um, I'd like to, you to put the foreign fighters in context about what percentage do they make up of overall insurgent forces? Uh, I lost you there. Could you repeat that question, please? Of the bad guys you are facing, the insurgents, what percentage of those are foreign fighters? Uh, I, th I think it's a, a, a small percentage, uh, you know, uh, still... Uh, uh, less than uh, uh, five percent, uh, you know, and, and that's uh, like I said, just an estimate. But uh, again, uh, they come uh, they come in and uh, bring some uh, uh, leadership skills or a cadre type uh, operation, and uh, but it's a it's a small percentage. Could follow up quickly. You had mentioned the challenges in trying to find Osama bin Laden. 
What's unclear to me is why is it these challenges seem to be insurmountable? Yes, it's rugged terrain. Yes, he is good at blending in, but can't we counter that, find a way to find him? Well, we haven't been successful in that yet, but I can tell you everybody's applying every resource they can to, uh, to do that. Donna, let's finish up with you. Sir, Donna Miles with the American Forces Press Service. Um, I'd like to shift for a second and get sort of a status report of uh, the 82nd. And based on the cumulative deployment you've had, how would you say you've changed your TTPs? What have you applied? What lessons from past deployments are you applying now? How are you going about your mission differently? What are some of the um, cumulative impacts on your troops and how are you overcoming the challenges of that? Well, the, uh, the, the learning and the, the, the learning that's going on since uh, the beginning of this, uh, uh, this war has been tremendous. Uh, we continue to uh, adapt our tactics, techniques, and procedures. I think uh, the biggest change that uh, most uh, the, the troopers will uh, tell you from uh, this time is that uh, when they came back this time, uh, there's uh, been significant improvement in the uh, economic development of the country. There's a, a lot more um, commerce moving out on the roads there. Uh, they have, uh, we have uh, done a, uh, a much improved uh, job uh, working with the, the people as uh, in the, uh, both the Afghan National Security Forces and the Afghan uh, government as they have developed their capacities. It's kind of both growing at the uh, same time. Uh, as far as the, um, the challenges uh, of uh, repeated deployments and, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the length of deployments uh, they continue to uh, perform magnificently. We have a, a great uh, reenlistment uh, rate where the uh, soldiers uh, know what the, the contributions they're making to the mission. Uh, they're supported by uh, tremendous family members uh, back there at uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and uh, they continue to uh, provide tremendous sacrifice and service on behalf of their nation. Uh, General, we have reached the end of the time that we allocated for this, but uh, before we bring it to a close, I thought I'd throw it back to you in case there's something you'd like to add uh, uh, or something that we may have missed uh, or something that has stimulated a thought of yours before we close this up. No, I just uh, one of the things that uh, everybody asks about is, uh, of course, all the, the contacts and everything else going on. But uh, I just got to tell you that uh, the provincial reconstruction teams are doing yeoman's work over here and uh, are making a huge difference as they uh, work with the, uh, the local governments and uh, the local security forces as they uh, help uh, develop the, the, the uh, capacity in those, uh, uh, those government leaders and uh, development leaders in uh, the economy and uh, the commerce section. So that, that, that's making a huge uh, impact here and uh, providing the uh, Afghan people a huge opportunity to, uh, to uh, succeed here. And I'd just like to say thank, uh, thank all of you, the, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines over here that are, uh, and the civilians, uh, part of this combined jan uh, joint task force are doing a uh, superb job. And uh, I think everybody out there ought to be very, very proud of them. Uh, I believe the progress in the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Afghan National Security Forces uh, that they've made in the, in the last uh, several years here will have a lasting effect on all the people of Afghanistan. There is still a lot of work to do, but with every project completed and every mission finished, uh, Afghanistan is one step closer to the peace and stability the people of Afghanistan deserve, and uh, the enemies of freedom would uh, deny them. But uh, thank you for your time, your questions, and your support. Well, General, thank you, and uh, hopefully we can uh, impose upon your time a uh, short distance down the road and have you back in this room again. Okay. Thank you very much, Brian.